أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله المصطفى الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد Welcome to another episode of our tafsir page by page and inshallah ta'ala today we're on page 137 which is in the 7th juz surah al-an'am In the previous episode we mentioned those verses which Allah Azza wa Jalla spoke about the importance of not ridiculing the Qur'an or mocking the Qur'an or the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that if you're with those people who do so, then you should leave them and ignore them until they change that topic and go into a different topic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the role of the believers is only to remind and to admonish and to advise. And that Allah Azza wa Jal commands the believers that those people who don't want guidance or they mock the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, they're not interested, then leave them and ignore them. Let them think that this world is is only jest and play, let them be deceived by the dunya. But you should continue to advise and admonish, but those people Allah Azza wa will hold them to account for that which they which they do. And for the believers, however, for them guidance is the most important thing. The most precious and valuable thing that you have in your possession is the guidance that Allah Azza wa has given to you. Because if you have Iman and you have guidance from Allah Azza wa and nothing else in the dunya, no money, no property, no house, no car, nothing, absolutely nothing. But you have iman and guidance. You are from the most, the most uh, wealthiest of people. And if you have everything in the dunya, all of its wealth and all of its treasures and all of its beauties, but you have no iman, then you are in reality the poorest of people and the most destitute of them. And so the believer understands what is precious from what is not precious. And if Allah blesses you with both, then that is from the bounties that Allah Azza wa has given to you. But the believer knows what is most precious and what is most valuable and therefore what is most worth fighting over or, or, or keeping. In the verses or the passage that we're going to take today, uh, from verse 74 onwards, Allah Azza wa now mentions to us the story of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And this particular telling of this story or this particular aspect from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam goes and fits very well with the general theme of the surah which is establishing the proofs of Allah's worship alone. Allah Azza wa will now give to us a practical example of this from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam because the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam used to worship many gods besides Allah Azza wa Jal and Ibrahim alayhi salam would look at these idols that they worship besides Allah and he would see that they can't talk they can't move, they can't defend themselves, they can't speak, they can't do anything. So how can they protect others if they can't even protect themselves? And so Allah Azza wa Jal tells us here the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how he looked at the universe and realized that there is nothing in the universe that is all-powerful, almighty, and therefore deserves to be worshipped and therefore only Allah Azza wa Jal alone has that right to be worshipped subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says in verse number 74, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال إبراهيم لأبيه آزر أتتخذ أصناما آلهة إني أراك وقومك في ضلال مبين Remember when Ibrahim said to his father Azar How can you take idols as gods? I see that you and your people have clearly gone astray as we said, Ibrahim والسلام, lived at a time and in a, within, a, within a nation that used to worship gods besides Allah and this is one of the resemblances or similarities between the story of Ibrahim السلام, and the story of our own Prophet Their people were people of idol worship. And so the people of Ibrahim had multiple gods that they used to worship besides Allah Azza wa And Ibrahim السلام, realized the fallacy of that which they were doing. And so he's admonishing and he's advising and he's reminding and he's questioning. Perhaps they too will reflect, they too will consider the fallacy of that which they are doing in terms of worshipping these gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa tells us here, and remember when Ibrahim said to his father, Azar, because Azar is his father and he's also on the way of his people and to his and to the rest of his nation as well. But Allah Azza wa tells us here because we know that Ibrahim alayhi father didn't believe. In fact, he became one of his most ardent enemies, which shows you that sometimes when you have Iman, Allah Azza wa tests you in different ways. 
and from the greatest of those tests and the most difficult is when the people who are closest to you turn away from that same guidance. And there are people whose parents don't believe, whose spouses don't believe, whose children or siblings refuse to believe. And that's not just in our time today, but Allah Azza gives us examples of this in the Quran from the stories of the prophets. Me and you are not greater or more virtuous than the prophets. If it can happen to the prophets, it can happen to other than them. Which shows you truly that Allah, the guidance is in the hands of Allah Azza wa alone. That a person can be a prophet of Allah, but he can't help his own father. Prophet of Allah can't help his own wife. Prophet of Allah can't help his own son. Prophet of Allah can't help his own uncle. And that is because Allah Azza wa alone is the one who determines guidance. So he said to his father Ibrahim, do you take all of these idols as gods besides Allah? I see that you and your people have clearly gone astray. Allah Azza wa then tells us the way that Ibrahim السلام, arrived at this conclusion, that all of these gods besides Allah are false. And Allah Azza wa tells us that Ibrahim السلام, was a man of reflection, a man of contemplation, a man who would use the skills and abilities that Allah gave to him and the senses that Allah Azza wa gave to him of sight, of hearing, of intelligence and he would use them in a way that would bring him closer to Allah Azza wa use them to reflect upon the universe not like many of us today who travel and see and hear but we don't really ponder we don't really reflect we see them and we pass by we hear things and we pass by we're told things and we don't really reflect or use our intelligence to understand them but the believer is the one who uses the signs of creation in the universe to bring them closer to Allah Azza wa And that is what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in verse 75 concerning Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. وَكَذَٰلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ In this way we showed Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam Allah's mighty dominion over the heavens and the earth so that he might be a firm believer. We showed Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam the signs of the heavens and the earth he looked at the heavens, the skies, he looked at the sun and the moon and the stars. He looked at all of this and he became familiar or he became certain that only Allah Azza wa Jalla alone can control this. Only Allah can control this. It is so perfect the creation of Allah, so amazing the creation of Allah, so majestic and so big and massive the creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla, that surely the one who created it must be the one who is alone worthy of worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you look at this? Allah Azza wa Jal gives us now examples in the coming verses. In verse number 76, Allah Azza wa Jal says that he first started to look at the stars. When the night grew dark over him, he saw a star and said, This is my Lord. But when it, is, when it set, he said, I do not like things that are that are set or that set. Allah Azza wa says that at night, Ibrahim alayhi saw, saw the stars come out and he saw them with their beauty, he saw them with their light, he saw how high they were and he said, and this isn't because he believed that they were gods besides Allah, hadha rabbi. He said this as a way of saying like we say for the sake of argument. I will accept your proposition that there are gods besides Allah. Surely if they're going to be gods besides Allah, those gods must be big or must be powerful and mighty and majestic. So the star, the stars are from the most majestic of things that we find within the universe. So I will agree for the sake of argument that this is a God besides Allah Azza wa Jal. So he's saying, Hada Rabbi, this is my God, not because he believes in the stars as gods besides Allah. This isn't kufr or shirk because the prophets of Allah can't commit kufr or shirk. Allah Azza wa Jal has saved them from that. But it is by him, by way of him arguing and debating the point. Just as you say to someone who comes as a Christian, even if for the sake of argument we accept that Jesus was the Son of God, then and then you start arguing with him based upon his own logic and his own proofs. This is exactly what Ibrahim والسلام, is doing. أَفَلَ, but then when the sun, the stars set, meaning when the sun rose, and now no longer can you see the stars, they're not visible anymore, he said, I don't like things that set, meaning how can this be a God when it doesn't control and doesn't determine its own, its own course? The stars can't be visible during the day once the sun has risen and there's nothing that the stars can do in order to make themselves visible. Which shows to you that they don't have full power. They don't have control over everything. They can't stop and say to the sun, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you stay where you are. We still want to remain during the day. Or it's not time for you to rise. Or whatever it may be. 
The stars are also upon a path that has been determined and that determination of that path therefore shows that there is one that is greater than the stars that must have created it. فَلَمَّا أَفَلَا قَالَ لَأُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ He said once he saw the sun, the stars setting that I don't like those things that set because that shows that they don't have full and complete power and authority. In verse number 77, Allah Azza wa then says that he saw something greater than the stars and that is that he saw the moon. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الْقَمَرَ بَازِغًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ قَالَ لَإِنْ لَمْ يَهْدِنِي رَبِّي لَأَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الضَّالِّينَ And when he saw the moon rising, he said, This is my Lord. But when it too set, he said, If my Lord does not guide me, I shall be of those who go astray. So now Ibrahim السلام, goes to the next biggest of Allah's creations, and that is the moon. And he says, Surely this can be a God, again, by way of, of agreeing or by way of, of, of simply say, for the sake of argument saying that let's just accept the proposal that this is a God. The moon is bigger than the star. It is brighter than the star. It has more benefits than the stars in terms of what people use it for and how they use it in terms of their daily lives. And so therefore this is the God. But the moon also sets. The moon also cannot determine its own path or rather authority to remove or come out of its own path. <clears throat> or to change its destiny in that way, or its course in that way. So then Ibrahim والسلام, said, when it set, meaning when the sun rose, If my Lord and my God does not guide me, if Allah doesn't guide me, then I will truly be from the misguided. And that shows that if you are truly seeking guidance, you must turn to Allah Azzawajal. You must turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah to show you the path with sincerity and Allah Azzawajal will open that path for you. And that is for everything. For the non-Muslim who seeks to know the truth, let him call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla alone. Whether he calls him God or calls him Allah, whatever name, but Allah Azza wa Jalla alone. And he says, Oh Allah, show me the path to you. Oh God, show me the true path to you. And if you do so with sincerity, Allah will open that path to you. Allah will show you the path at least. Whether you accept it or not is down to you. And likewise for the Muslims, if you don't know what is the true path to Allah Azza wa Jalla in terms of your aqidah, your belief, your worship, Ask Allah Azza wa Jalla, make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, show me the path that is truly your path. Show me what you consider to be the most beloved of the religion of, of, of Islam to you. Meaning that from because there's differences of opinion, there's so many different groups and, and sects out there. Which one is the one that Allah Azza wa Jalla wants you to follow? Ask Allah and make dua to Allah Azza wa Jalla as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam does in this verse. Allah Azza wa Jalla then says in the next verse, verse number 78, فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ بَازِغَةً قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرُ فَلَمَّا أَفَلَتْ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا تُشْنِكُونَ Then he saw the sun rising and cried, This is my Lord, this is greater. But when the sun set, he said, My people, I disown all that you worship besides Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibrahim a.s. now goes to the sun. So he's dismissed the stars, he's dismissed the moon, now let's go to the sun. Because the stars and the moon set when the sun rose. So he says, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. This can be our God. This is far greater than anything else that we've seen. The sun, with all of its power, with all of its light, with its heat, it is the greatest thing that we have that we can see with our uh, visible or naked eye. So this is our God, this is the greatest of things that we have seen. And again, he's saying this for the sake of argument. He's saying, let us accept your, 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 your premise that there are gods that are worthy of being worshipped besides Allah. So let us now go to the sun. But the sun also sets. The sun also cannot change its course. The sun also has a limited time that it will appear for, and then it must stop, it must set. And it cannot change that except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he realizes, or when he sees this, he says to his people, يَا قَوْمِ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ I am free of the shirk that you commit. Because every god that you bring, you will have one of these things that you will see. And that is why every god that is worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal, you can use or you can find within it this type of fallacy or this type of weakness or this type of contradiction between what a god should be and the attributes that they claim that their gods possess. You have a god, but he's a human. So that God needs to eat, that God's going to die, that God becomes sick, that God forgets. So now it's not all powerful. 
doesn't have the ability, can't protect itself, let alone protect others. Or it's an inanimate object, it's a, it's, a, it's a tree, or it's a stone, or it's a rock, or it's an idol, or whatever it may be. There will always be some weakness in the argument. Why? Because they are not true gods besides Allah. So if someone is sincere, someone just stops and thinks and questions and reasons using their intelligence, they will arrive at the conclusion that they must be a God worthy of worship, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who was there before all of the rest of creation. And he was there from the beginning, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jalla in verse 79 then mentions that Ibrahim alayhi salam comes to the one and only possible conclusion. And that is, إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have turned my face as a true believer towards him who created the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. So he says, so therefore, now that we've dismissed the sun, the moon, the stars, and they are the greatest of Allah's creation to the visible eye, let alone everything else that people claim are gods besides Allah, I instead turn my face as a true believer towards the one who created all of this in the heavens and the earth. The one who created the sun and the moon and the stars and everything else that you can see and cannot see, he is the one that I will worship and he alone I will worship and not associate anyone in worship with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is something which therefore Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam tells his people. By process of logic of logic and, and, and reason, we have dismissed all of these gods that you claim exist besides Allah. So therefore there is only one possible alternative left, and that is that there is one God alone worthy of worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in verse 80 tells us how his people responded, the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ قَالَ أَتُحَاجُّونِّي فِي اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانِ وَلَا أَخَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيْئًا وَسِعَ رَبِّي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا أَفَلَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ His people argued with him and he said, how can you argue with me about Allah when he has guided me? I do not fear anything you associate with him unless my Lord wills, nothing can happen. My Lord encompasses everything in his knowledge. How can you not take heed? So the people of Ibrahim salam didn't accept this. Even though they realized when he destroyed all of their idols, as we know from elsewhere in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya, they thought to themselves because he said to them when they asked him who destroyed these gods, he left the biggest one alone and he said, Ask the idol, he's the God, you ask him, and why he couldn't protect the rest of the idols. So then they said to one another, he's got a point. He's like trapped us now, right? We can't ask the idol, doesn't speak, can't defend, can't move, can't do anything. But then their arrogance and stubbornness overcame them. The obstinacy overcame them, and they turned around and they said, no, these are our gods either way. And so likewise here, they're still arguing with Ibrahim alayhi salam. They argue and they're debating and they're still saying, no, these gods are worthy of being worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salam responded and he said, Atuhajuni fi Allahi wa qad hadan. Are you arguing about me with Allah? Are you arguing with me about Allah after He has guided me? You're telling me this after I've given you all of these proofs and you can clearly see that what I am upon is certainty and guidance and truth, and what you're upon is weakness and ignorance. And I don't fear what your, your gods besides Allah. I know they can't do anything. إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيْءَ Unless Allah wills that it will happen to me. So you may call upon your gods and say, Oh, harm Ibrahim. Oh, my God, oh, our gods destroy Ibrahim. Oh, our gods punish Ibrahim. I know that they have no power. They can do nothing unless Allah allows, them, allows it to happen. If Allah wants it to happen, it will happen. And that is why when they threw Ibrahim salam into the fire, as we know, Allah Azzawajal commanded this great creation of Allah to be cool and safe for him. And Ibrahim salam left the fire, walked out unscathed, unharmed, untouched والسلام, by Allah's permission subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسِعَ رَبِّي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمَا My Lord encompasses everything in knowledge. How can you not take heed? Look at the signs that Allah Azzawajal gave to them. Sometimes the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in miracles and the signs that Allah gives to his messengers and prophets alayhi salatu wasalam. But me and you, we don't need necessarily to see them because we have the book of Allah azza wa jalla that is the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs. If you were just to stop and to ponder and to reflect, you would see these signs of Allah azza wa jalla. So now for me and you as Muslims, we've already accepted this first stage. 
that foundation of Iman, that Allah alone is worthy of worship. We accept the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the truthfulness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthfulness of the Quran. But what many of us will now struggle with is the next step. And that is that if Allah created us, and Allah alone is worthy of worship, and Allah told us that He created us, therefore for the purpose of His worship alone subhanahu wa ta'ala, then many of us struggle with the fact that we now need to devote ourselves in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. We need to uphold the halal, stay away from the haram. We need to do good deeds, stay away from evil deeds. And it's very unfortunate that many of our brothers and sisters are struggling with this because of their weakness of Iman, because they don't spend enough time reading and studying the Quran, because they don't spend enough time seeking knowledge of Islam and learning about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shaitan comes and he covers them or he, he makes them heedless and forgetful. And so we forget this now. We've accepted the most important part, but that is only the first step in order for us to have Allah's true mercy or Allah's complete mercy, because they will be from the believers and the Muslims, those who will be punished by the fire. Why? Because yes, they had Tawheed, but they lived a life in which they didn't fulfill Allah's obligations and they committed haram. So Allah will punish them in the fire until they are cleansed and then eventually they will enter into Jannah because of their Tawheed. But who would want to be in that situation of even being a moment in the fire when the Prophet told us وسلم, that a single dip in the fire will make a person forget every type of blessing that they ever experienced in their life or of the good that they ever had. A single dip in the fire, let alone being in it for as long as Allah determines. So therefore, you turn to Allah Azza wa Jal, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave off those sins, fight shaitan and his temptations because shaitan is fighting everyone. Shaitan is misguiding everyone. He misguides the non-Muslims by keeping them away from Tawheed and he misguides the Muslims by keeping them away from good deeds and from good action, from fulfilling their obligations that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed upon them. So all of us are fighting shaitan. All of us are battling shaitan in our own different ways. So the believer is someone who knows that if Allah has sent this down for me, why would I choose a path other than the path of Allah? Why would I go and find happiness or try to find happiness in a path in which there is no happiness because the only true happiness is in the path that Allah Azza wa has chosen? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that Ibrahim alayhi salam continued and he said to his people in verse 81, وَكَيْفَ أَخَافُ مَا أَشْرَكْتُمْ وَلَا تَخَافُونَ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ يَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Why should I fear what you associate with him? Why do you not fear to associate with him things for which he has sent down or authority? Tell me if you know the answer which side has more right to feel secure. They're trying to make Ibrahim alayhi salam frightened and scared using their gods. Ibrahim is saying, why should I fear your gods when they can't even defend themselves? They can't move, they can't speak, they can't do anything. And you at the same time don't fear Allah who controls everything in the heavens and the earth, who is the master of all things, who is all powerful, almighty Jalla fi Ula. Which one of us has more right to feel secure? The one who turns to Allah and seeks protection in him and he is the master of everything? Or the one who calls to these gods that can't even help themselves let on anyone else? Why are you trying to make me feel scared when you are the ones who should be afraid of Allah's punishment, of Allah's anger, of Allah's wrath? You should be the ones who are, in, who are fearful. Then tell me if you truly know the answer, which one of us has more right to feel secure? We will mention the next couple of verses from the next page because they're still speaking about the story of Ibrahim salam. In verse 82, Allah Azzawajal then says, الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم أولئك لهم الأمن وهم مهتدون. It is those who have faith and do not mix their faith with oppression who will be secure and it is who will be secure and it is they who are rightly guided. These people that Allah Azza wa Jalla will give true security to Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying are those who have iman and they don't mix their iman with oppression. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, which one of us does a mix iman with oppression? All of us oppress, all of us do evil, all of us harm others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, No, O daughter of Siddiq. The meaning of oppression in this verse is not the oppression of sin, but rather it is the oppression of a shirk. As Allah Azzawajal mentions in the story of Luqman when he said to his son, O oh my son, don't commit shirk with Allah in the shirk ala dhulmun azim, because shirk is the worst of all oppression. Oppression is to withhold the rights of others. So when you harm someone or when you sin against someone, you're withholding their rights. Essentially, that is why it's called oppression. 
But when you withhold the rights of Allah by not worshipping Him alone, by not believing in Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the worst form of oppression. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying here that those who don't mix their iman with idolatry, with shirk, they are the ones who will truly have safety. And they are the ones who are guided. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal has promised the believers, those who die upon La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, that they will eventually enter into Jannah and remain there for eternity. Some of them will enter into Jannah immediately, but even if they are, some of them are punished, they will all enter into Jannah uh, eternally. So those people who don't therefore have that pact of security from Allah Azza wa Jal are those who mix either their faith with shirk, meaning they believe in Allah, but they believe in other gods besides Allah like the Quraysh did. They believed in Allah, but they worshipped other than Allah. Or they don't believe in Allah at all. And they believe in other gods or they believe in no god at all. In the final verse that we will take, verse 83, Allah Azza wa then says, concerning Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَّنْ نَشَاءُ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Such was the argument we gave to Ibrahim against his people. We raise in rank whomsoever we will. Your Lord is all wise or knowing. These are the abilities that Allah Azza wa gave to Ibrahim السلام, that he would understand the signs of Allah, that he would be able to use them as proofs for Allah's existence, that he would be able to overcome his people in their disputation and their argumentation. نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءَ Allah Azza wa Jal says that we raise whomsoever we will in rank. And from those that Allah Azza wa Jal raised to one of the highest of levels that a human can attain are the prophets and messengers of Allah. And from them, the greatest of them is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after him are those prophets and messengers that Allah raised to the ranks of being Ulul Azm, the prophets of high determination. And from them is Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. And some of the scholars were of the position that after our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest of Allah's prophets and messengers is none other than Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the Khalil of Allah, his close friend. Inna Rabbaka Hakimun Alim, and your Lord is all wise and all knowing. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, we come to the end of today's episode. Barakallahu Fikum, wa sallallahu ala nabiya Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم